Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And this video is going to be another video in my uh, sort of beginner guide series that I'm putting together. And this series has an, a particular emphasis on a target audience of people who are just getting started with Orbiter. Uh, my goal is to reach out to people that are basically brand new to Orbiter. You've downloaded it, installed it, you got it working but you really are basically completely lost. You don't know how to do anything with it. You don't know how to get to the ISS. You don't know how to go to the moon, things like that. It can be, it, the learning curve from, for this program can be quite high. Now, I am assuming that you've already watched uh, the last two videos that I did because each new video is going to build on concepts from previous videos. So if you haven't seen uh, the first couple of videos you're going to need to go back and watch those first uh, because we're going to I'm, I'm assuming at this point that you know how to get into orbit because we've already covered that now we need to start looking at specific targets we need to start setting goals for ourselves. getting into orbiter and playing around is a lot of fun it's a sandbox type of environment you can kind of just jump in do whatever you want but when you don't have any goal or any specific thing to do, it kind of quickly loses, uh, you know, loses its, uh, you lose interest in it. It becomes maybe a pointless program if you don't have some destination, something to do. So what I think is a good goal to uh, start with, you know, because obviously we can't get too complicated with things. But a good goal is to just go to the ISS, the International Space Station. We're going we're gonna to set that as our goal, and we're not going to get there in one video. It's going to take um, a, a few different videos. I don't know how many, but we'll get there eventually. But in this video, we're going to start just by introducing a new MFD. We've already looked at Orbit MFD, and we know the basics of it. We have not yet covered what that huge list of numbers means and we won't get into that for a long time but we at least now know the basics of it we know what the highest point of the orbit is and we know what the lowest point of the orbit is but we don't know yet how to get into a specific orbit the only thing that we've done in the first couple of videos is to just take off point the vessel toward uh, some arbitrary heading and then head off into orbit when you need to go to a specific destination like the moon or the ISS it's not good enough to just take off point the vessel to 90 degrees or 100 or 45 or whatever at random and then show up at your destination it just doesn't work that way you have to be able to figure out how to plan to arrive at a specific orbit. And that's what, kind of what we're going to uh, start getting into. I think a good, uh, a good scenario for this most likely, if we go into the um, checklist folder and we'll just choose uh, mission number one, it's DG to ISS, and then we'll hit uh, launch orbiter. And we'll just be patient here for a moment while that comes up. Again, the only thing I'm going to say is that we're not going to go all the way to the ISS in this one video. It's, take, it's, it's complicated enough that it's something that's going to require, you know, a, a couple of, at least a couple of different videos before we'll have all the concepts that we need to uh, get all the way there. Now, this is how the scenario starts up by default, and something that I covered in the last video is the idea of this HUD not always being a good color, so we'll start off just by changing that with Alt-H, you know, again, press Alt and hold it, and then tap H one time, that'll change the color. First thing I'm seeing here that, that I don't like, and it's just, these are just small little details, but... It says that we've got a target base of Habana, and that's actually 
stupid. So we'll just go target no base because we're not going to Havana, Cuba. Um, we're going to the ISS. Now it already has the ISS selected as the target here in Map MFD, and I'm fine with that. So how do we how do we get into orbit so that we can go to the ISS? How do we even begin to think about that? It pretty much all begins with this new MFD that we're going to introduce, and I say new just for the fact that we haven't covered it yet. So we'll, you know, again, press SEL to bring up mode select to choose which MFD we're going to use. And we're going to use this one here called Align Planes MFD. So again, just select, then click over here for Align Plane, and this is what it will look like by default. Now, since we're sitting on Earth, the uh, reference body for a line plane MFD is the Earth. Uh, you can reference different bodies. And if for any reason this is referencing something other than Earth, then you're going to, going to want to press REF and then select Earth as the reference body. But the way these MFDs typically work is that um, whenever a reference body is needed, it will have the body that you're on automatically selected. And that's the case here. We're on Earth, so the reference body is the Earth, and that's, that's correct. And as you can probably guess, here where TGT is set to none, TGT means target. It's fairly self-explanatory. And we're going to want to change that from none to ISS. And if for any reason we don't know what some of these things mean. Uh, we can press this over here, M and U, and it tells us what these buttons mean. Ref means orbit reference, AR means auto reference, TGT means select target, and ELS means select elements. Then we can press M and U again to get back here. Now again, we want to target the ISS. So we come here through this list to TGT, and we can do it by, uh, here it says by name, so we can press enter and type ISS. Another way to do it is to press TGT, and then using the down arrow or the up arrow, we can come down to a spacecraft, and then you want to use the right arrow to come over here to this list. Now some people uh, they, they tend to do this. They'll, they'll click TGT and then they'll try to click spacecraft and notice that doesn't work. When you try to click that, it just makes it go away and they're confused. They don't know what's going on. So again, it's TGT. And if you want to go through the list, you use the arrow keys, up, down, arrow. That's how you navigate these types of menus. And then when you press the right arrow, that brings up this list. And again, you can't just click ISS because that just makes the box go away. You have to actually highlight it with the arrow key and then hit enter. And of course, we've already got the ISS selected, so nothing changed. But if we chose the other one, mirror, you can see it changed to mirror. So target, down arrow to spacecraft, right arrow over here to this box, and then we want ISS, and then enter. Now we have the ISS selected. Now we have two opportunities per day to take off from the ground and get into orbit so that we are, uh, so that we're taking off at a good time to rendezvous with the ISS. Now the fact of the matter is you can take off anytime you want, but the, if you take off at a bad time, it's going to make your job a lot harder once you get into orbit. So when do we know when it's time to take off? One thought that might cross your mind is that you might think, well, let me just wait until the ISS, according to MAP MFD, is right here, 
and there it is it's straight over top of my head and if I click ZM plus which stands for zoom plus then I can zoom in on the map and you might think well now is a great time to go because the ISS is right overhead so that must be a good time to go right no it doesn't work that way it doesn't matter in the slightest where the ISS is at you know the ISS could be down here over the ocean it could be over South America it could be over it doesn't matter where the ISS is at that has absolutely no bearing whatsoever on our decision-making process for when it's time to go what we care about is when the orbital plane of the ISS is close to our launch site and we can't actually get that information at least we can't get it very well with the orbit <clears throat> with the orbit lines set on ground track which is how they're set now so what we need to do is press uh, DSP which is over here and that will bring up some display parameters so we'll press that and you'll notice here that it says orbit lines is on ground track the way we change that is by pressing mod stands for modify and there's three options there's orbit plane there's off and there's ground track let's leave it for let's leave it on ground track for a moment hit OK and you can see this is what we already had so let's change it to uh, let's turn it off let's see what happens when it's off uh, when ground when uh, orbit lines is off we have no orbit lines it's pretty self-explanatory so let's look at the other one which was orbit plane and we hit OK now we can see that instead of having three of those orbit lines we now have one and this one orbit line is actually showing the orbital plane of the ISS as it orbits around the Earth and the best time to go and we're gonna pick a more um, we'll have a more a more suitable way of deciding when to go here in a moment but let me just explain briefly first if we kind of zoom in here on the state of Florida we can see that this is our launch site Cape Canaveral that's where we are right now if we were here at Wallops Island then that would be our launch site or if we were say let me turn tracking off uh, you know if we had a launch site over here on the uh, far east side of Africa then that would be our launch site and the orbit line for the ISS you can see is nowhere near that location but the orbit line for the ISS is currently close to our launch site which is here at KSC and just to kind of show how this changes over time let's let's warp time forward for a while so I'm gonna press T several times uh, we'll go all the way out to uh, 10,000 that yeah, looks like a thousand's fine and you can see that as the day progresses this yellow line which is the orbital plane of the ISS it moves from east to west and you can see it's actually now crossing that the launch site over there that I was just kind of pointing at and right now like if we come back to real time it's nowhere close to our launch site the uh, orbital plane is now it's now way over here crossing Africa on that side and the orbital plane is crossing nothing on this side it's basically the middle of the ocean so if we kind of press T again and we just warp time forward we can see if we kind of zoom in here on our launch site you can see that yellow track getting closer and closer to our launch site let's zoom in some more 
and let's zoom in some more. Notice I'm still at a thousand. And that's close enough. Let's go back to a, let's go down to a hundred. But you can see this orbit line moves from uh, again east to west, and we have two opportunities per day to take off and launch. And the time we want to launch is we want to launch when this orbit line is just about over, is just about straight over top of our launch site. But it, 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 we don't want to wait until it's all the way over the launch site, but we want to wait till it's almost all the way there. And the reason that we have two opportunities per day, let me show you this, is you'll notice that the orbit line has uh, two uh, patterns. It has a pattern that goes up from the south toward the north, which is what it's doing here, coming up out of the south, going north. And this is actually the one that NASA uses. Um, this is so for NASA's sake. There's only one opportunity per day because they never, for, for the reasons of uh, uh, for the reasons of safety and other factors, they only ever take this particular opportunity but let me show you that if we warp time forward at a thousand or let's go ten thousand even now let's go back to a thousand and we'll zoom in on our launch site you'll notice that this line let's go it's almost over the top of the launch site okay there we go so let's go back to real time it also crosses the launch site one time per day in this direction where it's coming down out of the north and going south and for the sake of orbiter at least it doesn't matter which one of these you pick you can pick this one or you can pick the other one now how do we get more precision or more accuracy than than just guessing as to like we're looking right now at this line and you know you might think well okay so the line is close to the launch site but do I leave now or do I leave when it touches this thing or do I leave when it touches this or well there's a much better way to know than just guessing based on this graphic and that's uh, the line plane MFD this TN number here stands for time to node and what that means is this is a countdown that lets us know when this line is going to pass right over top of our launch site and that's going to happen in 386 seconds and the best time to take off is when the TN, the time to node, is about about 315 seconds. It doesn't have to be exact. If you take off at 320 or you know 300 or whatever, you're going to be fine. But generally speaking, about 315 seconds is when you want to take off. Now we're not going to take off just yet because I just want to illustrate something which is to watch, uh, we're, now we're at 10x acceleration, and I just want to show that when this is zero or close to zero, you're going to notice that this line is basically straight over top of our location. So let's zoom in all the way. Take a sip of water while that's counting down. And here we are, we're just 30, okay, nine seconds away. And it's now right over top of our launch site. So the orbital plane of the ISS is straight over top of our heads right now. And now it's past us. And every second that goes by, it's getting farther and farther to the west. So for uh, today's sake, at least, we've missed, or at least for this uh, this particular line we've technically missed our launch opportunity we could go technically but 
we don't want to. We want to take off at the right time. So what we're going to do is we're going to catch it the next time it comes around, but we're going to catch it in the other direction, which instead of being you know, out of the north and heading south, it will be when the line is going the other way. Now you might think that's going to be 896 seconds from now because that's what the timed node says. Well, actually, no. This number uh, it doesn't really have any meaning until the uh, orbital plane gets really close to the launch site. So for now, we can just basically ignore this number and let's warp time forward until we see that yellow line on the other side get close to our launch site again. Notice this number is not really even changing. It doesn't mean anything yet. And it'll eventually start counting. But again, for now, who cares about that? Right now, just watch the yellow line according to Map MFD or another indicator, if you really want to have another indication, is this uh, positional indicator. As this swings around and gets closer to here, that's another way that we know. So if for some reason we don't have Map MFD, and I, and I can actually show this as well, let's power this side off so we don't have that graphic. If we just look at a line plane MFD, we can warp time forward and if we watch this positional indicator, we know that it's getting close. Uh, we know that that yellow line is getting close to us when this gets really close to here. You can see that's coming down. And once this number starts counting down, which it will here in just a moment, okay, we're getting reasonably close. There we are. Now it's counting down almost one second at a time. So if I now bring up Map MFD, you'll see that the orbital plane of the ISS is really close to our launch site now. See, there it is. Now when do we want to take off? We want to take off when the time to node is about 315 seconds. So let's go ahead and get prepared to do that. Um, one other thing I'll uh, cover before we get to that point is our launch azimuth and that's a fancy way of saying heading in the first couple of videos we talked about you know taking off and getting to a heading of 90 degrees and then in the other one we took off and got to a heading of 45 degrees there is a way to calculate uh, the launch azimuth that uh, the launch heading that we need but I won't cover that in this video. Uh, getting into calculations and such I feel is a bit too technical for the beginner. So how do we know uh, what heading we need to take off? Do we want 90 degrees? Do we want 40? What do we want? There are really there are only two headings that you need to worry about when you're taking off from Cape Canaveral. When the orbital plane is like this, which is when it's coming up out of the south and heading north, then we want to take off and go to a heading that's about 45 degrees. And if you want to be a little bit more precise than that, I would say 43 is a better number. If we go the other direction, when the weight that this line is coming this way instead of that way, then we want to go 180 degrees opposite of the 45 degrees, which would be about 135 degrees. So if we are going this way toward the ISS, then we want a, a launch heading of about 135 degrees. But to keep things simple, if you always go the same way, then you only have one number to think about. And that's that 45 degree heading. But again, a little bit more accurate is 43 degrees. So my recommendation would be to just always plan to take off and go to the ISS, at least for your first dozen or so flights. Always take off when the orbital plate of the ISS looks like this so that you don't have to think about the heading 
you're just always going to take off and go to 43 degrees. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, but let's warp time forward until we're at the correct time to go. And that's going to be, again, when this is about 315 seconds. And there's really no good way to know that. It's just something you know from experience and make a note of it, write it down, however you want to do it. And one thing to bear in mind also is that it doesn't matter where the ISS is at. So don't, don't think that we're waiting for the ISS to get here before we go. It doesn't matter. We don't care where the ISS is at. All we care about is this orbital plane. So let's uh, go ahead and warp time forward until we're at about 315 seconds, and then we'll go. Getting very close to that point. Let's go back to real time. And as soon as this says uh, 315, I'm going to press the plus key and hold it, and then tap control to lock it. That way we're ready to fly. And when it does, I'll go to this view uh, so that I can see the runway. That way I don't have to worry about veering off to the side of the runway. So T minus five, four, three, two, one, and blast off. And don't worry about this number anymore. It has no more meaning at this point, at least not for takeoff. So you see that it's doing all kinds of weird stuff now. Don't worry about that. It, it's correct. Now again, when we're at about 200 meters a second, here, we're going to pitch up. And there we are. And G to raise the landing gear. And once the landing gear is up and locked, there it is. We're going to put in a bit of bank toward the left. And where are we going? What did I say? What, what is our heading? Oh my god, I already forgot. No, I'm kidding. Our heading is about 45 degrees, but again, more precision is 43. And you can see if you look here, in map MFD, you can kind of see what's happening. As we turn toward the heading, that green line, which is our orbital path around the Earth, is getting closer and closer well, it will actually get, eventually get closer and closer to the orbital plane of the ISS. And we'll take a look here at the line plane. We're going to do a lot more with that through this flight. But first, we need to get turned to the correct heading. So I'm just banking here. Banking to the right until I'm at, you know, roughly 45 degrees. And we want to start turning out a bit early. And there we are. Kind of overshot it just a bit. Just let me bank just a little to the left. And again, uh, 43, uh, about right there. That gives us just a little bit more precision than 45. There we go. Okay, now, I want to pitch up steeply. And what I want to watch going forward I no longer care about the heading, okay? So don't don't track this anymore. Pay no attention to the heading anymore. We no longer care what our heading is. The only thing we care about now is what our relative inclination is and our rate. So put a piece of duct tape across your monitor if necessary to ignore this. We don't care what that is anymore. All I'm looking at now is my rate. My rate says negative uh, 0.129. You can see it's counting, obviously. And that just means I'm getting closer to the correct orbital inclination of the ISS. And I know, I, I will know, that I'm in perfect inclination with the ISS when my relative inclination is 0.129. 0, 0.00. Now, I will tell you, on your first flight, and on your second flight, and on your third, fourth, fifth, sixth, probably up to your dozen or 20 flights, you will never, most likely, get a perfect 0.00, 0 
inclination with the ISS when you take off and head to orbit. It, it just probably will not happen, so don't worry about it. All we want to do is get as close as we can to 0, 0.00. And then with a lot of experience, you know, after f many more flights, you will find that you're able to take off and arrive in orbit with a perfect inclination of 0, 0.00 degrees. But it'll take you a while to get there. It'll take experience. Now, I don't really like this orange, so the fact that the sky is not blue, I can change it to any color I want, so I'm going to go back to the green. Now, the only thing that I'm looking at is uh, basically the relative inclination. It's counting down. I'm happy with that, and the rate is a negative number. If for some reason the rate is positive, like if I do something stupid like this, now you can see my relative inclination is going up. That's bad. I don't want that. So I just want a negative uh, rate so that my relative inclination is coming down. Now, as uh, we refine this in the future, we'll talk a bit about the, dis the uh, time to the node in making certain adjustments to your, you know, your bank here. You notice if I bank a bit to the left, the rate goes down. If I bank a bit to the right, the rate uh, actually gets, you know, uh, closer to zero. But for for your first few flights, it's good enough to just take off, get to your initial heading of 43, and then just kind of let it go. And again, once you have the initial heading, don't worry about this anymore. This may end up saying 50, it may, I don't care what this says. Again, if you have to, press Control H to shut that off so that you're not distracted or you're not tempted to make changes based on what that says, because we don't care what that says. All we care about is the rate and the relative inclination. But I will bring back up the HUD so that I can keep track of my altitude and everything else because you can see my velocity vector you know we're, we are still trying to get to orbit so we don't want to forget the basics of getting to orbit my velocity vector is getting down here to the to the center point so I want to maybe tap up a little bit to raise it so that I'm still climbing And since we are trying to get to orbit, uh, we do need orbit MFD. We have a line plane over here, which gives us all the information that we need for getting to uh, for getting into alignment with the ISS. But we don't have any information for getting into orbit. So let's press SEL. Let's bring up orbit MFD. And oh my God, what am I looking at? None of this makes any sense. Well. Uh, projection is ECL and if we remember back I believe is video 2 we all almost always are going to want projection to be SHP now things are looking a little bit better but these numbers what do they mean that doesn't mean anything to me this is all retarded but if we press DST now we have information that makes more sense to us we have a altitude is 36, almost 37 kilometers, matches what we see here, and it shows our apoapsis going up. So we're pretty happy with all of that. Now all we really have to do is just continue flying on this heading. Uh, we don't really need to make any adjustments. Uh, later on down the road, when you get a little bit more experience, what you will want to do as you're flying up through the atmosphere <coughs> and planning to arrive in orbit so that you can you know be in plane with the ISS is you'll want to make subtle adjustments to your um, to your role so that you can adjust your rate notice how slowly the relative inclination is counting down right now if I put in just a little bit of left roll you'll notice that my rate 
actually uh, increases, meaning it goes farther into the negative. And by bringing the rate farther into the negative, you'll notice the relative inclination is actually counting down faster. And for this purpose, that's actually preferred. And it's preferred because I'm already past the descending node and I should have done this sooner, but I just, this, again, this is a sample flight. And we always want to make sure that the velocity vector is a little bit above the horizon, so a bit of up, uh, you know, which I'm pressing 2 to raise that. And you'll notice eventually that our uh, relative inclination, if we, if we continue at this bank, if we continue to stay banked, we're going to overshoot and we're going to end up raising the relative inclination. So it's better to just go back to center and we're just going to ride this out. Uh, we're not going to worry about having a perfect relative inclination once we get into orbit because when you're, when you're new, uh, you're, it's, it's just too much to try to keep up with. So if you, if you obsess over you know, trying to keep your vessel banked to the right angle, it's, it's never going to work out very well for you. So keep it simple here at the beginning. And right now I'm just kind of focusing a little bit more on my altitude and my horizontal speed. I'm not really too worried about uh, my aligned plane anymore. This is actually not too bad. I mean, more than one degree is pretty awful, but but if you're new to uh, orbiter and you show up in orbit with a relative inclination that's only one or two degrees out, then you're doing very, very well for yourself. You know, I know when I was getting started and I didn't really have very many good instructions to go on, my orbits were just awful. So all I'm doing now is just waiting to get up to orbital velocity. I'm at 52 kilometers, so we're still climbing. Velocity vector is above the horizon. You know, it's above that center line, so I know for sure that I'm climbing. If I need to, I can take a look at surface MFD, and I can see that my vertical speed's positive. And don't forget that once we get fairly close to orbital velocity, uh, it helps tremendously if you back off the main engines or even kill them entirely bef before you get to orbital velocity. And then you can just kind of use the, uh, you know, control plus to sort of babysit the engines there for the last few uh, hundred meters per second. But we've still got a thousand meters a second to go, so we'll leave the main engines on. And once we get up into orbit and get circularized, then we'll deal with this last little bit of relative inclination. I do want to show how to take care of that. Hey, let's pay very close attention now to our orbit and our orbit velocity because we're very close to the point where we are going to be in orbit. So what we want to do now is watch our APA and when that is 200 we're going to kill our engines. And remember the closer this gets to 200 the faster it counts so let's start backing off our engines. and we're almost at 200 and there's basically 200 um, notice I'm off by just a couple hundred meters but remember since we're still in the atmosphere we're going to continue to get a little bit of lift until we get to about 90 kilometers or 100 kilometers so we don't want to worry about this stuff yet what we have to do we have to prioritize getting a circular orbit before we worry about any of this. So in fact, let's shut that off so that we don't get distracted by it. 
and let's uh, just press T one time, and let's just warp time forward until we're at, say, you know, 100 kilometers, 95, well, there's 90, there's 95, and there's 100. Okay, let's press H, that goes over to dock, HUD, heads up display, press H one more time, that gives us the orbit, heads up display. Now, what do we do? Think back to the uh, first video and the second video. What, what do I need to do at this point? Take a look at the information. And just take a moment to think about what, uh, if you were in my shoes, or in my chair perhaps, what is it that I need to do at this point? And the answer is, I need to get over to uh, the highest point in my orbit. I need to finish climbing up the hill, and when I'm at the top of the hill, I need to use a little bit of main engine in the prograde position in order to bring up the other side of my orbit, because the other side of my orbit is currently 127 kilometers below the surface. That's underground. That's in the bottom. That's, uh, you know, way below the uh, ocean, or that's way below a mountain somewhere. That's not good. If we don't do anything about it, we're going to go around. We're going to get to the top of the hill. Then we're going to go down the hill. We're going to crash into the atmosphere here, crash into the surface of the Earth there, and that's not good. Now, how do I know when I'm going to be at this point? Do I just guess? Is there no way to know? Is it magic? Do I get a stopwatch out and just measure this point to this point and then try to guess how much farther it is over there? No, it's nothing like that. The time to Apple Apsis is given to me here. And that is going to be in 860 seconds. So you can do the math on that to figure out how many minutes that is. But that tells us exactly how long it's going to take us to go from here to here. And I don't want to wait that long, so I'm going to press T to go out to 10x. And we're just going to be patient. If we really want, we can press T one more time. But you can see when we're at 100, the numbers count by very, very quickly, and you could overshoot your the top of the hill, and that would be bad. So let's just be patient. 10x, we'll get there soon enough. Doesn't it take long, and enjoy the view. It's a beautiful view. Don't be in such a big hurry. And remember that when we uh, get near the top of the hill, we want to come back to real time and think about getting the vessel into position. We don't want to wait till we're all the way to that point. And we're close. We're three minutes out. So let's go back to real time. Notice there's nothing displayed here. And the seconds are counting down one at a time. So now what I need to do is I need to go normal plus. And then when I get to, wait a minute. Why are you looking at me like that? It's not normal plus? Oh, prograde. That's right. So we need to go to the prograde position. And then when we get to the top of the hill, we'll do a burn in the prograde position. And that will raise the other side of the orbit so that it is as high as the top of the hill. And we've still got two minutes until we get to that point and the vessel is already uh, basically in the correct position so we can press T to get a little closer and here somewhere around this point uh, we can press control and tap plus and we're raising the other side of the orbit now again if we put in too much main engine what happens is this number starts counting up. Notice that's 59. 
and that's 60. It's going up. That's not what we want. So let's kill the main engines. And with just one control plus, we're adding in velocity very slowly. We're raising the other side of the orbit, and this number is counting down. And that's exactly what we want. We want this PEA to be the same as our APA, or very close to it. You know, in, in orbit, in the real world, there's no such thing as a perfectly circular orbit. All orbits are some form of an ellipse. And the psi, the, um, how elliptical they are, is dictated or decided or calculated based on the eccentricity of the orbit. The closer the orbit is to 0 0.0000, the more circular it is. But uh, if you get enough decimal points, you'll find that no orbit is exactly 0, 0.0 repeating infinity. All orbits have some amount of elliptic nature to them. Uh, we can add in a little more add in a little more main engine now because we can see we're almost at zero we're almost at the top of the hill and our PEA isn't all the way up there yet so now we can go ahead and add in enough main engine to go ahead and get this all the way circularized we're almost there okay rotation and remember what I said too to get finer precision instead of using main engine we could use translation translation and we can just press 6 and we can see now that our orbit is uh, basically it's a perfect circle it's, just, it's it's almost perfect we've only got a difference of 400 meters okay so now we are in orbit and we're high up enough above the atmosphere that we can go around for you know probably months and months if not years and years without ever having to worry about our orbit decaying, which means, uh, you know, the orbit would gradually go down over time and we'd run into the atmosphere. We don't have to worry about that. We're high up enough that that won't be an issue. So let's bring this MFD back up. We can see that we are 0 0.66 degrees out of plane with the ISS and that's not too bad if you're anywhere even remotely close to this on your first second or third attempt then you should really pat yourself on the back you've done a very great job it will probably more likely be that you're three four five degrees out maybe even way more than that so how do we know um, how to bring this down and why does it even matter Let's bring up uh, map MFD. And let's zoom in on our position. If we press uh, track, TRK, we can track our position to find out where we are. And let's uh, kind of talk a little bit, very briefly, about why it matters that our relative inclination is not 0, 0.00. And it's fairly apparent in looking at map MFD that there are two different lines here. There's this yellow line, and that's the orbital path of the ISS around the Earth, and then there's this green line, which is our path around the Earth. If we zoom out, we can see that the ISS is over here, and uh, things just aren't matched up quite right. We're just a little bit off, and you might think, well, who cares? You know, if we... Uh, if we're off by an inch or a centimeter or whatever that is, uh, then sure, surely that doesn't matter. Well, that actually matters a lot. This much difference on a map may not look like much, but this much difference in space is, uh, let's just say it's a lot. I don't, I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but it's, it's quite a bit. So how do we fix this? How do we make this line match up with this line exactly? Well, we do that by bringing the relative inclination down. We need it to be 0, 0.00. 0. 
we have two opportunities to we have the, the best time to fix our relative inclination is at two different points in our orbit this point here which is called the ascending node a n that's the ascending node or this point over here which is the descending node and it doesn't matter which one we use there's no fuel savings uh, when you have a circular orbit there's no fuel savings to use this node instead of this node so it doesn't matter the decision for which one to use is usually based on which one you're going to come up to first in this case we're coming up to the ascending node first so it makes sense to use this node just because it's uh, the first one that we're coming up to if for some reason we wanted to we could skip it we could go all the way around to the descending node and we could align our plane over there instead let's look a little bit at map MFD and figure out what this ascending node descending node stuff means I have to zoom in or I have to move my position on the map here just a moment zoom out all right there we go a little bit more this way you will notice that the green line which is our orbit around the earth over here is to the left side of the map and the yellow line is on the right but at this point we cross and they switch positions and then as we go forward on this side now the green line which over here is on the left is now on the right and the yellow line which up here is on the right is now on the left this is when we cross the position coming from the north heading toward the south that's the ascending node and there is one other position which I'm sure you can guess where it happens in the opposite direction that's the descending node so let's uh, find that one and that happens right here so we that that's what these are the ascending node is when we cross the orbit of the object which in this case the object is the ISS and we have two opportunities uh, where that happens since we're gonna cross this one first again it makes the most sense to uh, use it so We'll, we'll use the ascending node to fix our orbital inclination now how do we know when we're going to be at that point do we just guess do we look at uh, map MFD do we zoom in here and wait until our ship indicated here by this plus sign do we just wait till it's there is that how we know well that's kind of a dumb way to that would be very dumb if that were the case and fortunately that's not the case we know when we're gonna cross this point because the TN here that's time to node when this gets to zero that is the exact moment that we're going to be crossing over that point and at that exact moment that's the time that we want to fire our engine in order to fix our relative inclination but there's a specific direction that we need to be facing in order for that to work if we're facing uh, like we are now which is almost prograde if we fire our engines at that point it's not going to do any good at all for a relative inclination in fact I need to pause the simulation for a moment because we're coming up to that point quickly if we 
if we are facing prograde and we fire the engine, the only th thing that's going to do for us is it's going to raise the other side of our orbit. It's not going to do anything for our relative inclination. It's just going to make our orbit unbalanced. What we have to do in order to fix our relative inclination is to burn perpendicular to our direction of flight. And fortunately, uh, Orbiter has an autopilot system that orients the vessel to the proper alignment for us. The only question is which button do we push or how do, how do we know which one to push and how do we know when to do it? Well, the time to node again is here. So that's when we're going to cross that point. But we also need to know the precise moment for burning the engine. And we can tell that by looking here at this information. This is the amount of estimated thrust that we need in order to bring our relative inclination down to 0, 0.00. We need about uh, 5.14 seconds using the full power of the main engines. And what I mean by that, when I say full power of the main engines, that means if we press the plus key and hold it for 5.14 seconds and we're giving it a full blast, that's how long it's going to take to bring this number down to 0, 0.00. It's going to take 5.14 seconds if we press the plus key and hold it. But we're not going to do that. We're not going to press the plus key and hold it because if we do, it's going to perturb our orbit and we don't want that. So what we have to do when we get up here to the ascending node we want our vessel to be oriented in the orbit minus position. That's this button here. That's this autopilot. The easy memory trick for knowing which uh, orientation you need, and this is the one that I learned early on and I've remembered it ever since and I still use it to this day, is AN equals AN. Okay, so AN, that's this, ascending node equals anti-normal. AN equals AN. Ascending node equals anti-normal. You see this says normal plus. This says normal minus. Normal minus is anti-normal. AN ascending node equals anti-normal. So I know that as I'm coming up to this point, I need to be in the anti-normal position. If I were on the other side, if I were crossing the node over here, it would be the other way around. Instead of cross, instead of using the anti-normal pilot, I would use the normal plus autopilot. So that's enough explanation. Let's do this. Unpause the simulation. I'm coming up to the ascending node, so I'm going to get into the anti-normal position by pressing the normal minus button. And we're just going to wait for the autopilot to settle. And once the uh, little up arrow thing here is pointing at the middle of that crosshair, that's when you know you're in the correct position. And you'll notice that it took us, you know, 10 or 15 seconds to get there. So you don't want to wait until the very last possible second to orient the vessel. You want to get oriented in advance. Now, this MFD is going to tell me to use the full power of the main engines when I'm half of this number. This number is 5.14. So when the time to the node, let me pause this one more time. So when the time to the node is about 2.5, then the autopilot or the uh, MFD is going to change 
this here, it's going to say, instead of kill thrust, it's going to tell me to engage the main engines. And the reason it happens at half this number is because burns need to be balanced. This is something that uh, we'll talk a lot about going forward, but whenever you're doing a burn, it's really important that you balance the burn. So since we're coming up to the ascending node, what we're there's only like one microsecond where we are actually at that cross point. And we can't do the, our entire burn in that single microsecond. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to do half the burn before we cross the node. Then we're going to do the other half the burn after we cross the point. That by doing it half and half, we will have balanced the burn. So let me press Control P to unpause. And again, I'm not going to wait for the auto for the MFD to tell me when to do the burn because I'm not going to press the plus key and hold it, which is what this would be telling me to do. And the reason I'm not going to do that is because the autopilot can't keep up. So at 20 seconds, I'm just going to use a little bit of main engine. So instead of pressing plus and holding it, I'm going to press control and I'm just going to add one or two clicks of main engine and we're going to burn for probably, it's going to probably be more like 40 seconds total. But you'll notice as we do that, the relative inclination will come down. So again, we're going to wait till we're at about 20 seconds and my plan is to burn 20 seconds on this side and then 20 seconds on that side for a total of about 40 seconds worth of burn. So here we are, five seconds, four, three, two, one, control plus, putting in just a little bit of main engine. Notice it's not all the way out there, it's all the way back here, and you can see that relative inclination counting down. And if we look at map MFD, what you'll see happen is you'll see these lines get tighter and tighter together until you can't even tell until you can't tell them apart see now the autopilot or the MFD rather is telling us to do the burn but you know we're doing it our way now we're all the way down to 0 0.14 0 0.10 see how tight these lines are getting and we need to get ready to kill the main engine. And there we do. So the engine's killed, and we have a relative inclination of 0, 0.00. And if we look now at map MFD, uh, we can't really tell these lines apart anymore. If we Even if we zoom all the way in, they're so close together that we can't really tell them apart. And what that means, simply, is that we are now in plane with the ISS. We are traveling around the Earth on the exact same orbital plane as the ISS. So everywhere that the ISS crosses some point of the planet, we also will cross that exact same point because our relative inclination is 0 0.00. It is exactly in plane with the ISS. Now actually catching up to the ISS is an exercise for another video. But I thought it was very important to spend uh, quite a bit of time just talking about a line plane MFD because it's something that uh, will, it's just, it's a fundamental part of orbit, of orbiter. Anything that you do in orbit, uh, or excuse me, anything you do with orbiter will in almost all cases have some, something to do with the, uh, aligning a plane in one way or another. Okay, so that is going to be it for this video. In another video, we'll talk more about aligned plane, and we'll also uh, discuss how to actually catch up to the ISS. You can see we're back here behind it, so we need to close the distance before we can catch up to it. 
you like this video, go ahead and leave a comment down below, and I will see you next time.